praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. And praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because the Lord our God is good, His mercy is forever sure. His truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age endure. God, when darkness clouds the way, when feelings cease and doubts remain, praise Him in faith for dawn that day, when light shall rest upon His face. Praise Him, praise Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this international rally. It is a great joy to greet you here in the name of our shared Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. This will be an incredible opportunity to both be informed and inspired about the worldwide ministry that we share together as Wesleyans. I want to warn you, though, you'll be listening to the Master this morning. He may ask you to surrender your career, or your children, or your cash. So be listening. He may speak to you during these moments. In just a moment, we're going to share together the parade of flags from the 93 countries around the world where the Wesleyan Church has ministry presence. As that is proceeding, please remain seated until Dr. Todd Guy invites you to stand later in the morning. Please remain seated so that all persons may be able to have a good view of the flags as they enter the auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my joy now to present to you the Parade of Flags for the Wesleyan World. Everyone needs. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. Oh, the hope of nation. Save forever, author us. 
for this opportunity to come together and to worship you and to praise you. Father, we thank you for these nations that are represented by these flags. But each of these flags represent people, Father, that we want to reach for Jesus Christ. So lead us this morning, Father. You are a God who reigns. You are a God on the throne. You're not a God of yesterday. You're a God of today. You're a God of tomorrow. You're the God of all. And you reign this morning. Take our worship. Let it be pleasing in your sight. Put your hands together. Amen. It's the song of the redeemed. Sing it with us. Rising from the African plain. Sing it out, everyone. Sing it with us. It's the song of the forgiven. Drowning out the Amazon rain. Lift it up to him this morning. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning for His goodness. It's every tribe, every tongue, every, every tribe nation, and every tongue. The love song born of a great choir. Here we go. It's all God's children. It's all God's children. Sing glory, glory. Hallelujah. He reigns. Go 
caught up in the heavenly sound. Amen. Praise Him this morning. That what a beautiful is sight echo in God's from eyes. the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. From the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. Here we go. Talk God's children. It's all God's children. Singing glory, glory. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. It's all God's It's all God's, God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Praise God. He reigns. Just take a second and just bow your heads. Just bow your heads. Everyone close your eyes. You've seen the flags of each of these nations walk by you. Single one country out in your mind see that country. Maybe it's a missionary. Maybe it's a person you've already been praying for. But in the stillness of this moment, lift that person up. See their face. Lift that person up right now. Lift that country up. The splendor of the King, robes in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, lifted up with me this morning, oh, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, no, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing that next verse. Age to age he stands. Lift it in praise. Age to age he stands. Oh, and time is in his hands. Beginning at the end. Beginning at the end. The God had three in one. Oh, Father, Son, the light and the lamb. Let's stand and praise him. The lamb. How great is our God. 
How great is our God this morning? Sing it and praise Him. How great is our God. beautiful sound this morning. How great, how great thou art. How great thou art. Lift it to him this morning. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. You believe that? Say amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Keep praising the Lord, church. We're here to worship the Lord of the nations, aren't we? Thank God for His presence among us. It's been my privilege for the last seven years to serve first as secretary and then as vice chairman of the International Conference of the Wesleyan Church. Many of you were here at a general conference, a couple of general conferences uh, prior to this one when we voted to create the International Conference and then our friends in the Philippine General Conference and the Caribbean General Conference concurred with us that this was a great idea to reorganize the Wesleyan World Fellowship into a fellowship, more than a fellowship, into an actual legislative body that would govern the Wesleyan Church worldwide in terms of its doctrine and its global mission. And it's been such a joy to serve the church in this capacity. The International Conference is an amazing mosaic of countries and cultures and customs. It's a symbol of our denomination's commitment to fulfilling God's purpose for us in the world. Namely, that we be united in Christ in the cause of spreading scriptural holiness to every tribe and nation and language around the earth. Last January... In Panama City, Panama, there was a historic gathering of 150 delegates and guests who attended the second international conference of the Wesleyan Church. Now that gathering was historic for a couple of different reasons, not the least of which was the, the fact that this was the first international conference held outside North America where the Wesleyan Church was first born. This international conference was a symbol of the fact that Wesleyan influence is growing and spreading around the world. And we have a joyful journey that we are on together as North Americans and as brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. A joyful journey in which the North American church, in a sense, is diminishing in its uh, central place of leadership and uh, governance in the world in order to share partnership with our growing, multiplying church around the world. Another reason to call that second international conference of the Wesleyan Church historic was that it uniquely expanded the pathways for new leadership, increased diversity, and world impact for Wesleyans everywhere. This uh, gathering uh, celebrated the fact that some new leadership is emerging in places where you might not have thought that the Wesleyan Church would expand as rapidly and as formidably as it is. But now from places like the land down under and the land of the long white cloud, we're going to see new leaders coming into prominence in the Wesleyan Church. Today, this year, the International Conference advanced Wesleyan ministries in Australia, that first land I talked about, as well as New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud, to a new status among Wesleyan ministries. These had formerly been mission fields of the North American General Conference, but the International Conference advanced them to the status of established regional conferences. In fact, the very first such 
conference in the history of the Wesleyan Church. They will be known as the South Pacific Regional Conference now of the Wesleyan Methodist Church, as it's known in their part of the world. And this step empowers former mission fields to become self-governing missionary sending partners with the other general conferences of the Wesleyan Church. Would you congratulate them this morning? In fact, we are honored this morning to have with us the two leaders of that South Pacific Regional Conference. The Reverend Rex Rigby was recently elected as the first Aboriginal Australian National Superintendent of the Wesleyan Methodist Church in Australia. Rex, are you with us today? Right over here. Would you welcome Rex Rigby to the General Conference? And the Reverend Dr. Richard Waugh is with us as well. He is one of the founders of the Wesleyan Methodist Church of New Zealand. And I see Peter Binsey, but I don't see Richard. Richard, where are you? Am I missing Richard somewhere? Where's Richard? He's way in the back. Well, I can't see you, Richard, but you're waving your hand. And so somebody say congratulations to Richard. This morning, this service is going to conclude with a benediction and blessing from these two leaders representing the growth of the Wesleyan Church around the world, something we've been praying for, yearning for, working for, giving for, sending for, serving for. This service is a celebration of the wonderful blessings and season of harvest that the Wesleyan Church is experiencing globally. And we're about to see a video in a moment that features one such place where hope and holiness are being spread and transforming lives. This is a video featuring our denomination's second largest church in the world, the North Bogota Wesleyan Church in Colombia. And at the, later in our service, uh, we're going to be led in prayer by the pastor of that church, Dr. Juan Pineros de la Cruz, who will join us here on the stage. Would you direct your attention now to the video? Colombia is a country placed in the northwest part of South America, with Bogota like its capital city. At the northern part of the capital city of Bogota, it is placed the North Wesleyan Church, a dream birth in God's heart and in the missionary vision of the United States of America. Misael Cotrone, a man who crossed the borders and dared to do more, he started 30 years ago, along with the apostle Juan de la Cruz Piñeros, what this place is today. Believing in our growth capacity and passion for the souls, they started a work that has grown in amazing ways and that has been able to reach the most difficult places with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are one of the largest church in the city with more than 7,000 active members. Involved in the growth and in the projection of the church and this allows us to be a positive influence in the society. Our work goes beyond the natural capacities, allowing us to reach impossible places, proving God's love in every little detail. Time has given us the great privilege of planting 38 churches around the world, showing that this vision of expansion has no limits. Our work is based in the vision of small groups. Through this strategy, we have been able to see the massive growth of our congregation. Day by day, we can see the amount of testimonies, miracles, healings, and signs that our community experiences. A community that is full of passion for Jesus, worshiping and exalting His awesome name. We have a team of 10 pastors working full time and five pastors working in partial time. They work with passion taking care of what is under their covering. Through a dynamic and creative production of services, we have 10 different inspirational meetings, children's church, Igle Kids, youth groups like Be Teen, Be Young, Be Forever Young, Ladies Ministry, Welcome Group, Marishes Ministry, Golden Age for the Senior People, Small Groups, We Are More Social, Formation Schools, Bible Institute, 
Schools for Couples and the Bridge. We are a church that thinks in the well-being of the community. Our social and educational foundation has under its covering five children homes, helping more than 650 poor children. Thanks to our excellent work in our organization, the government of Colombia gives the 30% of the support for each one of our children's homes, and the North West Legion Church gives the other 70%. This way, we're obtaining excellent results. The North West Legion School fulfills the most high quality standards of Colombian government for education. Now we have more than 1,200 students. They enjoy recreational and innovational formation and education. We are growing in our project to be a bilingual school. This way we reinforce in our students the passion for a second language. Today, the North Wesleyan Church is not only helping the spiritual growth in our country, is also helping the financial growth in our society. We are providing direct and indirect jobs. Families that today depend directly from the work and effort that we have built. That is why the management and the administration has a main role in distributing in an effective way all the resources that we have received. North Wesleyan Productions, musicians, singers, composers, more than seven teams of worship and four gospel bands of different kinds of music. Alma y Cruz, Piso Arriba, Soul, and Electra Pop, groups with a great social impact inside and outside the church. Radio Wesley is the radio station of the Wesleyan Church in Latino America. Today, it has more than 800 daily listeners in different Spanish-speaking countries. This year, we celebrate our 30th anniversary. That is why from the 26th to the 30th of September, we are going to say in one voice, Vive! A great anniversary celebration in which together we will have a life-changing experience. Guests from every continent will be part of a movement never seen before. We invite all the Wesleyan community to be part of this great blessing for us. So together, like brothers and sisters, we can be part of the change that this world needs. Gloria a Dios. Oremos. Omnipotente y eterno Dios, te damos gracias porque tu gloria y tu nombre se extiende a las naciones. Te pedimos tu bendición, Señor, por este glorioso avivamiento que se extienda a las naciones, Señor. Que todas las naciones sean impactadas por el poder de tu palabra, por el poder de tu evangelio, por el poder de tu santidad. Señor, enséñanos y ayúdanos en esta conferencia a recibir la visión que todo lo podemos en Cristo que nos fortalece. Glorifícate, Señor, en todos los delegados aquí presentes para que tomemos esta pasión, la pasión por salvar el mundo, la pasión por las almas y que nos ayudes a entender que lo podemos hacer. Te damos gracias, Señor, y que tu gloria siga siendo extendida a las naciones. En Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. By the time the 6 p.m. news went live, on the 12th of January, 2010, the world knew that something terrible was happening in Haiti. What we now know is that on that day, a natural disaster of epic proportions had crushed the tiny nation of Haiti. You saw images of broken buildings, broken bodies, terrible grief, suffering beyond belief. But in the middle of this incredible need, you showed up. In spite of the slow response of the international organizations, within hours the Wesleyan Church was mobilizing. First came the medical teams, wave after wave of them for months. And then the badly needed relief supplies, 500,000 pounds in all. And then the rebuild teams, now more than 60 and still coming. Reverend Doucette Dorenville, the National Superintendent of the Western Church of Haiti, 
has a word for you. He speaks English well, but he wants to share this with you in the language of his heart, Haitian Creole. Thank you, Len. Si que Haïti ak l'église wesseyenne en Haïti te fait yo mal en pile à cause tremblement de terre 12 janvier 2010. The Western Church of Haiti has been struck badly uh, because of a, an earthquake on the 12th of January 2010. Je dis à que nous comptons en pile parce que nous avons une opportunité ça parce que que nous pas gagnent limite il gagne toute liberté pour dire yon merci qui sorti dans entraille non But today we're rejoicing because of this opportunity that we have and the freedom of our hearts to tell you thank you from the very very bottom of our hearts Merci pour grand aimé ou te manifesté envers nous dans soins physiques soins psychologiques soins soins médicaux et en matière de reconstruction Thank you for the incredible love that you have manifested to us in the care of our bodies in the care of our minds in medical care and also in the by means of reconstruction Jusqu'à présent n'a pas continué aider non et nous connaît gain plan encore qu'a fait pour continuer avec aide sao envers Haïti et l'église wesseyenne d'Haïti Even now you are still helping us and we know there are still future plans for that help to continue Non pas tes seul dans mes temps désespoir nous t'ai ou t'es avec nous We were not by ourselves in, a mo in our moment of desperation we felt that you were always with us ça ou te fait à bon Dieu content pile à coup. Bénédiction à continuer suivre. I'm sure that God is pleased to see your acts of love towards us and the blessings of God will continue to be poured out on you because of your obedience. Bon Dieu pas pas j'oublier geste important ça ou te fait envers Haïti et envers l'église wesseyenne d'Haïti. L'église en Haïti pas oublier non tout. The, the Wesleyan Church of Haiti will never forget these uh, amazing gestures of love that you have extended to us. N'a pas continuer prier pour vous. C'est pour bon Dieu continuer béni conférence Amérique du Nord. C'est pour béni pays au Amérique. And it is our prayer that God will continue to bless the Wesleyan Church of Haiti, the North American Conference, and, and, the, and the countries of North America. Merci. What you have just heard is How Great Thou Art, sung in the Patamuna language. And one of the people that was in that group is with us this morning, Doris Wall. Doris was captured by a vision many years ago. Now, she was a little younger when that vision went around in the former Pilgrim Holiness Church by Dr. R.G. Flexen. And one of, part of that vision was that we would start mission stations in Paramacatoy, Guyana, which is on the Brazilian border, very remote village, community area, and plant those mission stations all across Brazil to Peru. 
Now that entire vision did not take place. There were government issues and whatever. But we have someone who in 1967 went to Paramakatoi and lived among the people. In fact, I think the words of John that say, the word became flesh and lived among us, fits you, Doris. We know in John that means Jesus, but Jesus told us to live like him, and that's what you've done. Not only did she just live there, Doris is a nurse. She graduated from Christ Hospital School of Nursing in Cincinnati, Ohio. Took all those skills that she learned there. She took a few classes, Bible school classes and so forth, and went to Paramakatory. Paramakatory is a place where the plane comes in three times a week if the weather's good. Someone, every day, someone will call out to the capital city on a, on a um, ham radio and let everybody know that everybody's fine. If you're ill, Doris takes care of you. If Doris can't take care of you, then if the weather is good, a plane will take you out. If not, you pray. Isn't that right? I've heard... You pray anyway. <laughs> Doris spent her time <clears throat> translating the New Testament in the Patamuna language. And just this last, about two months ago, that New Testament in the Patamuna language, the first time people have seen the scriptures in their language was completed. And Doris, I think it's interesting because you worked with some interesting people. It was us, and who else did you work with? It was actually the Roman Catholic priest who said, we have to have this revision, and I want God to... I want people to read the Word of God, and I want it to impact their lives. So the Roman Catholics and the Wesleyans work together right. for the Scripture, right? <laughs> and on that day, a few months ago, hundreds of people came in. Do you want to tell about it? We celebrated in a big way. It was, uh, I've been celebrating this whole year. Hundreds of people came in. Many walked five days to get there, correct? A couple. Some walked, some came in canoes to get there and left with boxes of Bibles on their backs to take back to their tribes and communities the Word of God. Doris, today we celebrate your life. You've lived very simply. I remember hearing that you had a little heart trouble. And so what is it you did to take care of yourself? I jumped up and down and cardioverted myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word becoming flesh and living among us. Bless you. Dr. Marlon Hestick is the president of the Guyana Wesleyan Bible College, and he has a few words to say to us. Well, today we want to thank God for Sister Doris, the Guyana District of the Wesleyan Church, which comprises of over 50 churches, and the Wesleyan Bible College in Georgetown, and that Paramakatoy that Doris pioneered while she was there. We joined with the churches, we joined with the Wesleyans there, and we joined with the colleges and the students, and we joined with all the other students from other churches and denominations in Guyana to thank you for what you did. We remember the call. When she was called, she came from Kentucky, land of the horse. And she was called to Guyana, land of the jaguar. In Kentucky, they tamed the horse. In Guyana, the jaguars run wild. And she left eating fried chicken to go eat cassava and kasiri. Well, not you, but the people there. God used her powerfully to cultivate in very 
different cultures from ours here. She cultivated among the Akawayos, among the Caribs, and among people who didn't even know English the way we do. What is our legacy? When we hear about Doris in the United States, we say, oh my, she left in 1967. But back home, they call her Amai, Patamona for grandmother. And it's not because she has grown in age, but because she, as a nurse, delivered several of their babies, hundreds of them. And for example, today, Spence Robin, who is the son of one of the pastors, third generation to Doris, is the pioneer that builds the churches, built the new one at Paramakatoy, built the one at Red Creek, build the one at Chenapau and the Bible school building at Paramakatoy. Plus, one of the young men that she delivered as a nurse, Lennox Joseph, is now the pastor of our church at Philippi, the Philippi Wesleyan Church. Today, we thank you very much on behalf of the Ghana District of the Wesleyan Church and all of us, including myself, when you taught me at Bible College years ago. I thank God for you. As an expression of appreciation, let us stand and pray. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Father, we thank You for Your Son, who left the glories of heaven and dwelt among us. You continue to become flush, flesh as we allow you to dwell in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Your grace reached down into the great state of Kentucky to a young girl by the name of Doris Wall and called her, first of all, to yourself through salvation and sanctification by the Holy Spirit. You called Doris to Guyana, South America, to dwell among the people, and in particular, among the Amerindian people in the interior of Guyana. You have worked through her as a nurse and a midwife, as a college professor, to train pastors and leaders. But just a couple of months ago, your word became flesh as Doris and her team worked diligently to translate the New Testament to the Paramunga language, people who now have your written word for the first time since creation in their own language. We give you thanks for Doris and for her example of your grace as you dwell among us. May you be made known through your word to the people of Guyana, and around the world, in your name we pray, amen. One correction, the Padamona um, New Testament had been translated by Helen Bassett, but it was about 50 years ago or 45 years ago, and it needed badly to be revised. Well, I tell you what we have here, Doris. Here is a leather-bound copy of the translation with your name right there, Doris Wall, made especially for you for this day. Thank you, and God bless you. We love you. Doris, Doris warned me that she didn't know for sure what we intended to do this morning. We were going to, you may be seated if you're not already. That we would honor her in some way. And she said to me this morning, 
I'm not going to like you very much after this service is over. <laughs> but at this stage of my life, Doris, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> the greatest evangelistic tool in the history of the Christian church has been the Jesus film. Dr. John Connor and his wife Marge have served ably as the directors of the Jesus Film Partnership and Project for the Wesleyan Church across the years. He is soon going to be stepping to a different level of pace of activity with that, and our new uh, director of the Jesus Film, effective about a year from now, or a little less than a year from now, will be Reverend John Croft, who's here on the platform also. So this is what was, and this is what shall be. And so these are our two gentlemen, and with us also is Reverend Babaham Hamal, who is the National Superintendent of Nepal, where there's been great productivity and kingdom growth from the Jesus film. Dr. John, speak with our brother. We're going to ask uh, some questions to, uh, to Brother Babu. Babu, when you were first saved out of Hinduism and were baptized, how many Christian churches of all denominations were in Nepal? At that time, only four churches over there. Four churches. And uh, in 2001, when the Jesus Film Ministry began in uh, Nepal, how many churches, Wesleyan churches, were in Nepal? Yeah, only one church was there. One church in 2001. Today, how many Wesleyan churches are in Nepal? Yeah, today. We have 42 churches. Until 10, we had 29 churches now. We have 42 churches. 42 churches now in Nepal, Wesleyan churches. <laughs> How many of those churches are a direct result of the Jesus Film Ministry? Yeah, it has direct established by the Jesus Film, 18 churches. 18 churches as a direct result. What is your vision for Nepal? I want to see 300 Wesleyan churches in Nepal until my life, unless my death. So before you die, you want to see 300 Wesleyan churches. I think that's a vision that's reachable. How can we pray for you? I was, we had uh, one land for our own church because we are on rent so far. Uh, I would like to request all of you for the land for our own church. So one of the ways that we can pray for you, that the Lord would help you to find land uh, that you can pay for and your congregations can pay for. Thank you. All of you should have found a small multicolored brochure on the place where you are seated this morning that says on it, Campaign 300. The objective of Campaign 300 is to show the Jesus film over the next three-year period of time, to show the film to three million people, utilizing 30 Jesus film teams, out of which 300 new churches will be planted in a three-year period of time. If God honors this vision we believe He has given us, it will be the most significant planting of new churches in a limited time frame in the history of our denomination. And we are very enthused about it. We actually can calculate it. If we're going to do this, increase the number of teams and all of the rest, what will this do to us and how will we fund this thing? It will require $1.8 million to do what I just said have 30 teams on the ground for three years, show the film to three million people, and have 300 churches planted as a result. One million dollar price tag on that. We prayed over this in the GP office and really felt this was a God-given vision to us. And so we launched a quiet campaign last October with the objective of reaching with the assistance of the Wesleyan Church ultimately 1.8 million dollars. That was the launching of the quiet phase. Those of you who know how capital campaigns work, and then we were to launch, I am to launch, the public portion of that campaign here with you this morning, which I am very happy to do. The donor response during our quiet phase could be described as nothing other than incredible, and I'm happy to tell you this morning that we have absolute firm commitments, and many of them money already in hand, 
for $1.731 million in hand. We have another commitment where the bow is not quite tightly tied, but it's almost there and will be there, I'm confident, one way or the other, for another 60K. So in reality, we have firm or almost firm commitments for $1.791 million. It is the most successful campaign from the headquarters perspective in that shorter period of time, I think maybe ever. And here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the deal. How's your math working? The gap from 1.791 to 1.8 is $9,000. How small a sum is that? We're going to take an offering here in a few minutes, just a couple of minutes. I need to tell you this straight up. It's in the capacity of this group here this morning to easily put us over the top. It's an average of less than $10 per person for every person who's in this auditorium. And don't one of you tell me you can't afford it. I've seen you wasting your money at the restaurant. <laughs> so it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with our capacity, ladies and gentlemen. It has everything to do with our willingness. And who would want to miss an opportunity to be a part of the greatest evangelistic tool in the history of the Christian church and the greatest church planning effort internationally ever in the history of the Wesleyan church? And you can do that for $10. Now, there are many of you here who could and should do more than that, but ladies and gentlemen, I would love to have the officials of the conference announce later in the conference that this Sunday morning service had put us over the top. We need $9,000. You have it. You can give it if you want to. Why in the world wouldn't you? So, ushers, if you'll get ready, please, we're going to ask Reverend Babu to come and pray the offertory prayer in Nepali, and then we'll receive the offering. Brother Babu. प्रभु म तपाई परमेश्वर सँगै यतिखेर धन्यवाद भन्छु प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वर सँगै मेरो आज वर्षौं देखिको प्रार्थना प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वरले सुन्नु भएको छ प्रभु तपाई जीवित परमेश्वर हुनुहुन्छ सबै कुरा दिन सक्ने सबै कुरा देख्न सक्ने र गर्न सक्ने प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वर हुनुहुन्छ तपाई परमेश्वरले सुरुदेखि अन्तसम्म सबै कुरा गर्नु भएकन प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वरले आशीष दिनु भएको छ बढ्दै फल्दै फुल्दै र प्रशस्त हुँदै जाऊ प्रभु आज तपाई परमेश्वरले यस देशमा प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वरका मरेका आत्माहरूलाई जीवित बनाउनु छ प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वरले जसरी मलाई चुन्न भयो त्यस ठाउँको लागि प्रभु तपाई परमेश्वरले त्यसमा बढ्दै लैजानुको लागि दुष्ट आत्मालाई विजय गर्दै प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरको राज्य र तपाईँ परमेश्वरको धार्मिकता विस्थापित गर्नको लागि प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले आज यस ठाउँमा ल्याउनु भएको छ म बिन्ती प्रार्थना गर्दैछु हे प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले आज जसरी त्यस ठाउँलाई चुन्नु भएको छ प्रभु जसै तपाईँ परमेश्वरले त्यो ठाउँमा हामीलाई विस्थापना गर्नुभएको छ प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वर कहिले पनि नडग्ने परमेश्वर तपाईँ परमेश्वरमाथि म विश्वास गर्दैछु आजको दिन तपाईँ परमेश्वरले स्वर्गीय ढोका खोल्नुहोस् र प्रभु त्यस ठाउँमा तपाईँ परमेश्वरको नाउमा मानिसलाई विजय तपाईँ परमेश्वरले आज मरेका आत्माहरूलाई बचाउनको लागि प्रभु त्यस ठाउँमा तपाईँ परमेश्वर यीशु प्रभुले बहाउनु भएको रगतको थोपाको शक्ति प्रभु त्यस ठाउँ प्रकट गर्नुहोस् प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले त्यस ठाउँलाई पनि प्रेम गर्नुभयो जसरी तपाईँ परमेश्वरले संसारको प्रत्येक कुनालाई प्रेम गर्नुभएको छ प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरको उपस्थिति त्यस ठाउँ दिनुहोस् प्रभु हाले हाले प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले आज मलाई मेरो लागि केही पनि पर्दैन प्रभु तर त्यस ठाउँमा तपाईँ परमेश्वर एउटा मण्डली भए तपाईँ परमेश्वर दिनुहोस् प्रभु हे प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वर सिकामा गुहार माग्दैछु प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले त्यस ठाउँमा टोका खोल्न भएको छ र प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले आफै स्थापन गर्छ प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले दिनुभएको उपस्थिति अनुग्रह कृपाको लागि धन्यवाद दिन्छु बिन्ती प्रार्थना गर्दैछु प्रभु तपाईँ परमेश्वरले मेरा सबै कामहरूमा मेरा सबै प्रार्थनामा तपाईँले सुन्नु हुनेछ प्रभु यो कुरामाथि निश्चित भइकन प्रभु म यो बिन्ती प्रार्थना चढ्दै आशीष माग्दैछु यीशु प्रभुको नाउँमा आमेन Oh, 
Jesus film has been the most effective tool for evangelism and church planting that we have used in our entire history. Across the years, thousands of people have come to Jesus Christ and hundreds of churches have been planted because of the Jesus film. In the 120 years of Wesleyan missions, this is the most effective tool that we have ever used for evangelism, lay leadership mobilization, and church planting. Hindus, Muslims, animists, Buddhists, secularists have come to Christ through the ministry of our Jesus Film teams. Our Jesus Film teams have planted an average of one new church every week for the last six years. In the last six years, they've shown the Jesus Film to over two and a half million people. Sometimes uh, the requirement is to count how many people came. And it was so hard that day to count because when we were counting, people were coming in, the, in this place and that place and that way, that way. Many, many people came to raise their hands to see we believe in Jesus, we want to start a new life. When I was watching the film of Jesus, I believed in the salvation because nunca existiu and nunca existirá um homem. Our Jesus Film teams are national teams. They understand the language, they understand the religious atmosphere because it's their religious atmosphere. We as North Americans simply come alongside of them as partners to help them with their equipment, their support, and with their travel. The only thing that holds us back is funding. The programs are in place, the people are in place, they're ready to go. They simply need the means. One of the very best things that we've ever done here at Central Wesleyan Church with regard to world missions is when we got involved with the Jesus film. A little over two years ago, we determined that we were going to try to see if we couldn't raise the necessary funds to make it possible for the Jesus film to be translated into a language. For us, it became the Wali language, a group of people in northern Ghana. What a thrill it was for me a little over a year ago to join a group of people as we showed for the very first time the Jesus film to the people of northern Ghana. Their responsiveness was immediate, it was impactful. But I want you to also know how impactful it was for the people of our church fellowship. They caught the vision. They grew excited about having a part in seeing the gospel communicated so effectively and so meaningfully. I heartily recommend not only the Jesus film to you, but your participation in helping to get the gospel communicated all around the world in this very, very effective means. As we look towards the future, there are still 865 languages without the Jesus film in groups of at least 50,000. And typically there's no missionary and no church. Over the next 10 years, we'd like to partner together to see how we could take the message of Jesus to every group that has never had a chance to hear about him. It's amazing to me that every one of us can make a difference in seeing people around the world have an opportunity to come to Christ through the ministry of the Jesus Film. For just $10, 25 people will see the Jesus Film and 10 of them will respond. What an incredible, practical, reachable opportunity for every one of us to make a difference. I don't know about you, but I'm just overwhelmed by what God is doing across the world, particularly through this Jesus film. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? If you have seen the Jesus film, would you stand if you've seen it? Praise the Lord. If you know someone who has seen the Jesus film, would you stand? If you know someone who has been touched, whose lives has been changed by the Jesus film, would you stand? Praise the Lord. What a testimony. What a testimony to God's amazing grace. Sing it with me. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Sing it to him as a testimony. I once was lost, but now I'm found blind but now I see twas grace twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear This is our testimony. My chains fell off. My chains fell off. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood of mercy reigns this last verse. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Lift it to as a testimony, my chains were gone, I then set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, unending love. God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Just a couple of verses in Luke chapter 10, a couple of verses in Luke chapter 10 from a portion with which we are familiar, a story we know well. The Bible says this, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. For these uh, past five plus years, 1855 days to be exact, it's been my responsible privilege to serve at Global Partners. For me, an amazing capstone to these 40 plus years of ministry in the Wesleyan Church. In the spirit of the scripture just read, I have been on my way. I have been to many villages and people have opened their homes to me. While I did not have the opportunity to sit at the Lord's feet in the literal sense, I have in a very real sense listened to him by sitting at the feet of others. Those incredible members of our tribe from around the world. From these people representing our seven GP world areas, I have learned powerful lessons for life and ministry. Lessons, frankly, that I already knew but they were made new and fresh and alive in new and dynamic ways. And those realities were once again imprinted on my mind like letters sandblasted into a granite monument. And I want to share those with you this morning. I will warn you ahead of time, there are 15 of these. But that's not nearly as threatening as it may sound. From the Africa area, I learned the power of sacrifice. By the way, I just want to say this once and have it over with. I may have a little trouble with my emotions during this address. And if I didn't have, there'd be something wrong with me. We dedicated the cemetery at Kunsho, where so many of our early missionaries and their children, some as young as five years old, died from what was then known as Blackwater Fever. 
One pastor in Sierra Leone said of those early missionaries, even though they knew they were dying, they kept coming. From Africa also I learned again the power of the gospel. In one country more than a hundred churches planted in three years, an entire district created as it grew from only three to more than 35 churches, membership that grew by thousands, literally, largely because the Jesus film came to town, in this case came to Mozambique. From the Asia area I learned the power of flexibility. We carried cash into the country because it lacks a central banking system. We then exchanged it for local currency in a dingy second floor room where we sat on the floor as the money changers chewed their betel nut, spitting the juice into a tin cup while deciding one bill at a time whether they would accept it or reject it. All the while, the man across the room had his hand in the dresser drawer that beyond any doubt had a handgun in it. But there was no other option. It was time to be flexible. And this all in a country where we have the strongest Wesleyan presence in all of Asia and home to a growing and dynamic church. And from Asia, I also learned the power of creativity. Medical ministry in nursing homes, orphanages, hospital clinics, and remote villages with a large trained staff led by a medical doctor who's a GP missionary. He has also trained indigenous medical students in this large Asian country who are studying to become physicians while at the same time pointing them to the great physician. From the Carib Atlantic area, I learned the power of perseverance. You've already heard about the outstanding work in translating the New Testament in the Patamuna language. I was there a couple of months ago in the remote interior of Guyana for the dedication of the New Testament where some people had walked as much as five days, many had walked two and three days just to be there, just to get a copy of the Word of the Living God in their language, in their hands. And many of us in this room, I fear, have copies of the Bible gathering dust in our homes that are not nearly valued at the level I so dramatically saw in front of me. From the Carib Atlantic area, I also learned the power of resilience, which you have heard mentioned this morning. Who can forget January the 12th, 2010, the day an earthquake did a dance of death in Haiti? The devastation was beyond description. Lives were lost and buildings were destroyed, and our church was dramatically impacted, but new life has come. In the form of first response medical teams, more than 60 rebuild teams, gifts of more than $1.3 million of Wesleyans helping Wesleyans, and the church is rebuilding. There's new national leadership in place. You saw the NS this morning. Renovation of the national office is underway. New objectives for church planting have been adopted. A new hospital is under construction. A new sense of forward movement and purpose has risen. from the ashes of that earthquake. Resilience indeed. From the Europe area, I learned the power of prayer. Literally hundreds of people around the world are sharing in the first Friday prayer emphasis that prays through each of our nations and fields in Europe, a region of cold hearts and hard soil that once was home to great leaders of the faith, including Wesley and Whitfield and Calvin and Luther and Spurgeon and many others like Knox who prayed, give me Scotland or I die. Our Europe team is calling on God to soften the soil and warm the heart of Europe. And from Europe I also learned the power of incarnation, new church plants in Russia, in the Czech Republic and Poland, together with partnerships in church planning in both Macedonia and Bosnia and seven new church plants in Spain reflect the commitment to be a church planting movement in Europe. From Ibero America, or what we at one time called Latin America, from Ibero America I learned the power of vision. You've already heard the story and seen the story of Bogota North, a church plant 30 years ago with only nine people there the first Sunday. I have met with our Latin leaders in Lima, Peru, Panama City, Panama, and Medellin, Colombia, and been challenged by their initiative for missionary activity in their own power and impulse in Mali and Equatorial Guinea and Spain and Cuba, and now this year brand new work in Bolivia. Some of the finest leaders in the Wesleyan Church anywhere in the world are in Ibero, America. 
And from the Ibero-Americans, I also learned the power of action. Our Latin brothers not only sit around and reason together to discuss what could, should, and might be done, they also go ahead and get with it and get it done. And we've reaped the benefits of their forward focus and active vision on more than one wonderful occasion. From the Pacific area, I learned the power of partnership. The birth of our first established regional conference that General Superintendent Pence referenced this morning, the Wesleyan Church of the South Pacific, is a clear example of how we can partner together to advance the international church in ways not thought possible a generation ago. Australia and New Zealand, the Aussies and the Kiwis, with their mission units of Bougainville and the Solomon Islands, are the first of what I believe will be several of these new and powerful partnership models. And from the Pacific, I'm sorry, and from wherever I was, just the Pacific area, I also learned the power of celebration. The work in Papua New Guinea recently observed its 50th anniversary with much celebration at Fugwa. This included a great feast for which 300 pigs were killed. A marvelous celebration for everyone present except, of course, the pigs. From the Turkic Arabic area, I learned the power of dedication. He was only 27 years old, called of God and deployed by global partners to the Turkic Arabic world, and in February of this year, he lost his life there as a result of an accident. Hear his own words. My spirit has settled with a steady realization that God would have me be a missionary. I want to give all my life for this cause. I can no more abandon this quest than Samuel could have unheard the whisper. I know nothing else, but I must say yes. And we paid tribute to Stephen Smith, a missionary of the Wesleyan Church, whose home was from the Moncton Wesleyan Church in the Atlantic District, to whom I have just referred. And from the Turkic Arabic area, I also learned the power of courage small groups meeting in house churches in countries where it is illegal at worst or totally, totally frowned upon at best, people distributing Bibles in places literally torn apart by civil war and ethnic cleansing, and our people, your people, are there in desperate places living and ministering in circumstances, ladies and gentlemen, so far removed from the North American bubble as to seem incomprehensible almost to those who are settled in the false security of our current environment. Our missionaries are there, these people of great courage to be sure. And so my hat is off. My hands are together in applause and my heart is deeply warmed by those who have taught me so much. There is one more lesson, the 15th one in just a moment, but first a word about communion that will follow. Please pay attention carefully if you would. Those who are consecrating the elements will do so as soon as I have completed my remarks. We'll receive communion this morning, ladies and gentlemen, by the ancient practice of processional intention. We will all go to a station a communion station that will be established around this auditorium, we'll go to a station and receive elements there. You'll break off a piece of the bread, dip it in the juice that is contained in the chalice, and consume it there, and then you also will receive a copy of the outline of this morning's message and another graphic display on the reverse side of that card. Each station will be served by an international leader and a global partner's director. You will be directed from where you are now seated to the station serving your area. In some cases, the ushers will direct you to a communion station that is behind where you are seated, so we'll not always be coming forward, but some will be going in the other direction. When alerted to do so, please exit from the right side of the aisle, your right-hand side of the aisle. During this time, you will receive pictures of communion services around the world showing on the screen, and you will hear the live reading of people who are here in the auditorium. You'll hear the live reading by about a dozen internationals who will be reading familiar passages in their heart languages, and you'll be inspired by that. And now please consider this final lesson. 
that I learned, the power of innovation, the power of a new idea. About a year or a little more ago, I was in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the city of Lakasi, and was involved in their national conference and other things there. And in the Sunday morning service, they have a processional there. And as the processional began to come down the aisle, you know, there is the swaying that is so beautiful in the African musical context. And at the front of the procession was a young woman in a wedding dress. Now, I have been in Africa often enough to know that you can have almost anything happen in an African service. I've been in services where we had baptisms, child dedications, ordinations, Bible college graduations, officer installation, receipt of the members and the like, all in one service, but I had never been in a service where a beautiful young woman in a wedding gown came down the aisle at the beginning of the service. I turned to the interpreter and said, are we having a wedding this morning? He said, oh no, we do this sometimes. I said, you do what sometimes? He said, we have a young woman in a wedding dress come down the aisle to remind us that we are the bride of Christ. We, the church, are the bride of Christ. And as the bride should be pure before her husband, so the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should be pure before the bridegroom, Christ himself. It was a powerful image. It made great impact on me of a truth we all know. We are the bride of Christ. He has left certain assignments and responsibilities in our hands, and dirty hands cannot complete the task. And so now in just a few moments, we're going to come, those of us assembled in this place, the redeemed ones, the pure in heart, we will come to the Lord's table to testify to our relationship with the Master and with those who are His. Dr. Piotr Gazarowski and Reverend Carlston Christie are coming now to consecrate the elements. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. Give us, give us our daily bread, bread which is a symbol of our daily life, our daily needs. Jesus said, I am the bread, and who is coming to me never goes hungry. Today we are gathering around the table, Holy Communion table, and we are meeting our Lord, the one who is coming. The one who is saying, I am the bread. And we are coming because we are hungry of forgiveness. We need reconciliation. We are coming to meet the one who is hungry of our presence. We are coming to receive forgiveness, which is the beginning of life, of, of, of daily life. We are coming to meet the one who said, I gave, I gave my body for you. This is my body given for you, for your daily life, for you to live. This juice represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ it was shed for you, for me, for the entire world. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I invite you therefore to come and partake of these emblems to your total health and be thankful. Father, bless these, we pray, 
may be partake in faith and be healed and be helped and be thankful in Jesus' name. Gong te kama tight nook mala. Ite blue wina bai une polo pu. Ite blue Jesus u ya te me po. Ye wala pu tao. Pulu mo pusu. Yanamu pu mala. Tengi te te bo. Ipidi pu de pu ya. Molo bai. Sela mala u pong. Upon alokong. Sela mugutuik. Uyito tok. Au yat no gongi puk le be te puya. Mala kasa le ma ko yanamu puya mala. Tatli tunde bo. Sela ko mala eme nak igupu tuya te to. Gatu ya umana yao. Sela chi magute inji au yat no gong kai chale. Uyito to au yat no gongi puk le be te puya. Mazabla yet le ye kwa ya taile, sele pulumo pusu na na pu au yat no gong yao. Molo bai sele gok ya bai, tenji sing enji au yat no gong yao. Ite bulu, wele kupu ye kama pe, igupu au yat no gong mala, ye pu ponale. Mala kasachi weji book, anet le ite bulu itu be, pulu. Pulo mu pusu natnik molo bai tenji sing enji nui ke kok ya bai igutok yawule tenama se bula ejik ma weji ali be mala ite bulu Jesus fung molo bai imunu winakai. Da Jonza Lumka Isaia 53, versia 7. Vamos chanisa, vamos tsonga ata, anga fulinomo. O cota xinim fana le xisu aka, e o tlagueni, ninim fu le miela aka, e masueni calavai tsemela cavoia, anga fulanga nomo. A susuile, e o chanisa canubiwa, o tane, xicare cavano, varisha caracayena. Imani la tunzuke kile swaku kususiwa misawe ni alawa anyaka ni le swaku abiwa ikwala ho kasi joe swati kurami na bangu ibe kile sireni rava joe kambi ekufeni kaya na harini mfuwi ikuwa anga johanga chumu kutani anga shisanga inomwa yena shikwembu shiranzile kumwitsova hivuvazi loko atawa. A endile utum zayena, a mamba yasu joe, at a vona vatukulu, at a le isama sipuyayena, utan in tiruaye hova, uta kateka, emavoquen yayena, equala ho, cantiru amoya wayena, odatzaka, ashura, ekutiva kayena, nanzo amina, wakululama, oda canisa, vanu lavotala, utan yena, ishviri shayena, Oda tirwalela kujoha kavona. Ikwala ho, zita mwinyika kuavela kale yena, si mweni wakulukumba. Ata avela ana rifu, niva nulawa fumaka, ikuwa oti nyiketele rifu, kutani asaiwa eshikarika wa sujoe, kumbe, kambi yena, ishviri shayena, oruele nanzu wavan lava utala, ota kongelela sujoe. Vem me dizer com isso. Venha em um fé noir sobre todo o país. Jogo de trois heures après midi. Vem de trois heures, Jésus, ele é bem forte. Ele, ele, la massa batani. Que vle di, bom Dieu, bom Dieu. Por que isso é o lago com isso? No mundo que te lá, eu ganhei que tende ele falar. Eu disse, mas depois ele, lá mesmo, 
yon nan yon kouri al pran yon eponj li trempe l nan vinèg li mette l nan prent yon gol wozo li longe l bobou Jezu li bal brel men lot moun yo di ton nan mon che an ou esi e li ap vin de livre li Livro Ayon Kai Marcos Kinagabihan dumatin si Jesus kasama ang labindalawa Nan nakausa, nakaupo sila at kumakain Sinabi ni Jesus Tinitiyak ko sa inyo na ipagkakanulo ako ng isan sa inyo kasalo ko ngayon Nalungkot ang mga alagad at isa-isang sinasabi sa kanya, Hindi ako yon, Panginoong Diyok, hindi po ba? Sinabi niya sa kanila, Isa sa inyong labing dalawa na kasabay ko sa pagsasaw-saw sa mangko. Papanaw ang anak ng tao ayon sa nasusulat tungkol sa kanya. Ngunit kahabag-habag ang taon yon na makakanulo sa kanya. Mabuti pa sa taon na yon at hindi na ipinagaanak. Habang, kamuka, habang kumakain sila, kumuha si Jesus ng tinapay at nagpapasalamat sa Diyos. Nakakatapos, pinagpuputol-putol niya ang tinapay. Ibinigay niya sa mga alagat sa sin at sinabi tanggapin ninyo ito ang aking katawan dumampot din siya ng kupa at natapos nagpapasalamat siya sa Diyos iniabot ito sa mag, sa mag-alagat at mula noon ay uminom is silang lahat sinasabi niya sa kanya ito ang aking dugo ng tipan na ibinubuhos para sa marami. Katotohanan ang sinasabi ko sa iyo, hindi na ako iinom ng alak mula sa, sa katas ng ubas hanggang sa araw na iyon na uminom ako ng panibago sa kaharian ng Diyos. Luke 22:17. Na emi kissing one black cup wine. Na emi thank you, long God. Na he talk. You pla kiss him this pla. Na tell him na me long you pla. Long one him. Me talk him you pla. Now na behind to me no na drink one wine one more. In up long time kingdom belong God he come up. Na emi kiss him one black bread. Na he thank you, long God. Na I broke him, na I give him, long old disciple. Na I me talk, this play me body blow me, me broke him, long help him you play. You play him must make him all same, long thing in me. Time, all he cake I finish, all right, I me kiss him cup wine, na I make him one kind passing, all same I make him. I me talk all same, this play cup wine, I me no play contract, me make him long blood belong me. Na emi capsize him, na he help him yupla. Sto no hataraki, yon sho hatsets kara juni sets. So no toki, Petero a seire ni mita sare te kare ra ni itta. Tami no shidou sha tachi, narabi ni chouro no katagata. 私たちが今日取り調べれているのが病人に行った良い技についてでありその人が何によって癒されたのかということであるなら皆さんもまたイスラエルのすべての人々もよく知ってくださいこの人が治ってあなた方の前に立っているのはあなた方が十字架につけ神が死者の中からよみがえらせたナザレ人イエス・キリストの皆によるのです
あなた方が家を建てる者たちに捨てられた石が礎の石となったというのはこの方のことですこの方以外には誰によっても救いはありません世界中でこの皆のほかには私たちが救われるべき名としてはどのような名も人間に与えられていないからです The time we sin been plenty in our, our life, we not be able to help ourselves. Christ died for we, we not be the do what God wants, the right time where God pick. He asked for make anybody die for person where they do all waiting the Lord say no more. It can be say person grief or die for somebody we get sorry at. But God don't show we how he lack we because but always sin been plenty in our life, Christ died for we. Because Christ died for we, it don't make all things right between we and God. When I saw it be, we for sure say, it not go make God vex by we the day where God go judge all man. We na people we not be like God. But God bring we come back to himself by the die way in Peking die. Now, when we don't come back to God, we for know it for true say God will save we because in Peking don't grab come out na the grave. Not so that no more. We glad it because God don't make Jesus Christ bring we come back to himself. इस कारण ये मेरा प्रिय हो मूर्ति पूजा देखी अलग रहो बुद्धिमान मानस जसे गरी मंदु मे भू ते जांच कर आशीष को कचौरा जिस को निति हमी आशीष मग्स के तो ख्रीस्ट को शरीर को सहभागी हो रोटी जिस हमी भाँच्द के तो ख्रीस्ट को शरीर में सहभागी हो क्योंकि हमी धर तापनी एवट रोटी एवट शरीर हूं क्योंकि हमी एवट रोटी खाचो anh em và kẻ ngày trước cách xa hiện nay đã nhờ huyết đấng Christ mà đã được gần rồi vì ấy chính ngài là sự hòa hiệp của chúng ta ngài đã hiệp cả hai là một phá đổ bức tường ngăn cách là sự thù nghịch đã phân rẽ ra bởi vì ngài đã đem thân mình mà trừ bỏ luật pháp của các điều răn chép cho thành điều lệ Filipenses 2, 9 al 11 Por lo cual Dios también lo exaltó hasta lo sumo Y le dio un nombre que es sobre todo nombre Para que en el nombre de Jesús se doble toda rodilla de los que están en los cielos Y en la tierra y debajo de la tierra Y toda lengua confiese que Jesucristo es el Señor para gloria de Dios Padre L'amour de Dieu a été manifesté envers nous en ce que Dieu a envoyé son Fils unique dans le monde afin que nous vivions par lui. Et cet amour consiste non point à ce que nous avons aimé Dieu, mais en ce qu'il nous a aimés et envoyé son Fils comme une victime expiatoire pour nos péchés. गीत गाने लगे कि तू इस पुस्तक के लेने और उसकी मोहरे खोलने के योग्य है क्योंकि तूने वध होकर अपने लहू से हर एक कुल 
और भाषा और लोग और जाति में से परमेश्वर के लिए लोगों को मोल लिया है और उन्हें हमारे परमेश्वर के लिए एक राज्य और याचक बनाया और वे पृथ्वी पर राज्य करते हैं रेवल्यूशन फाइव नाइन सेज फॉर यू वे स्लेन एंड बाई योर ब्लड यू रैनसम पीपल फॉर गॉड फ्रॉम एवरी ट्राइब एंड लैंग्वेज एंड पीपल एंड नेशन Gracias con todo el corazón. Dad gracias al Dios altísimo. Dad gracias pues nos ha dado a su hijo Jesús. Dad gracias con todo el corazón. Dad gracias al Dios altísimo. Dad gracias pues nos ha dado a su hijo Jesús. Y ahora el débil diga fuerte soy. El pobre diga rico soy. the holy one give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks to with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ Dad gracias al Dios altísimo. Dad gracias pues nos ha dado a su hijo Jesús. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Come on sing it with me to the holy one. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done
because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Gracias, Señor. We give you thanks. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give thanks. Amen. During communion, a lady that I do not know came down the aisle and tapped me on the shoulder and said, will you, will you give us an opportunity to repent? To repent of our selfishness and our sinfulness. Those were her words. Because we, most of us here, live in the bubble I referred to before, and we have such capacity. So I'm going to ask Dahlia to sing the verse of this song again, Give Thanks. And if you'd like to be included in a prayer that wants to say to God, I repent of my self-centered spending, and I repent of my me-ism, and I repent of always trying to protect myself, and I repent of not sharing with those in need around the world as I could and should. This is not to put you on a guilt trip, but if God the Holy Spirit has pricked you in the heart, I'm going to invite you to come and stand here as she sings. We'll offer a brief prayer before we sing the wonderful song that Dr. Guy has on the program. If God is speaking to you and you'd like to be included in this prayer, you come and stand here, please, as she sings again. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, we give thanks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We stand before you this morning. your people that we repent to you this morning that we have not fully given everything to you forgive us for getting caught in in our own small worlds and realize that you want to expand our world. And in that expansion, you want to bless us even more than we've ever been blessed before. But it's an understanding of new kind of blessing, something we can't even comprehend. And so we thank you this morning, Lord, for the opportunity to repent and seek your forgiveness for our selfishness in this country. And for keeping our vision too low and too, too circumspect around certain things that really don't mean anything in eternity's view. So this morning, Lord, we ask that you give us a view of eternity 
And as that old song used to say, with eternity's values in view, help us to have those values, Lord. Help us to know that you've called us beyond what we've ever thought we could be called. And so this morning, we as your church, we as the Wesleyan church, receive the forgiveness you're giving us. And we praise you for it. And we look forward to how you're going to direct us anew and afresh in ways that we cannot comprehend. But we know you love us and you're calling us out because you love us. And so we receive that call this morning. And Lord, I ask that you would pour through us your love as we have never seen it before. That literally every church, every person that goes by the name of Wesleyan would just have love that pours out. And we know that nothing can resist your love. And so this morning, Lord Jesus, sanctify us fresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. Help us to see the world through your eyes. And we know we'll never be the same. And thank you for doing that even now. This we pray in your name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give thanks. Give thanks with a great. Sing it out. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Give him thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now, and now. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am weak. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am weak of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Could we have the lights up, please? And with the congregation stand as these folks are returning to your places, God bless you. Todd, I know we sort of short-circuited things here, but we want to do Jesus Messiah before these men pray. On the walkout, well, thank you very much for being here this morning. Now, I do have a little piece of news I cannot wait to share with you. Does anybody remember how much offering we were hoping for to put us over the 1.8 million? How much? 9,000. The offering this morning was in excess of 19,000. Because of what you did, people who are not even in this room will go with the message of Christ through the Jesus film and people you will only meet in heaven will be there because you threw a little money in the offering plate this morning. Yeah, can we do the song now? Do uh, you want to pray? They want to sing. Am I in charge or are you in charge? Come sing. Lift it up. No He's in charge, isn't he? Yeah. He's in yes, charge. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap offering this morning for his greatness, for his goodness, and his mercy. Lift it up with Sam. Love so amazing. Sing it to him this morning in praise. Love so amazing. Here we go, Jesus. Jesus Messiah. Bless 
thank you for the challenges that have come to us, Lord, to look beyond our own places, Lord, to look beyond our own community and to look around the world, to see what you are doing and to be a part of what you are doing, Father, around this world. I pray and ask, Father, that you would continue to encourage us, Lord that we would give of our resources, that we would give of ourselves so that we can see the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, the message of the gospel go into all places. And so, Father, we give thanks this day for the blessings that you are pouring out upon us and the ways that you are using us in Jesus' name. The Word of God, which closes our worship celebration this morning, is a word of hope and holiness for the whole world. And now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from stumbling and who will bring you into His glorious presence, innocent of sin and with great joy. All glory to Him who alone is God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, glory, majesty, power, and authority belong to Him in the beginning, now, and forevermore. And the people said, Amen. 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 You are dismissed. Go with the hope of the Lord and we'll see you at the afternoon service. My hope.